So what am I doing today? This is a El Cheapo digital wireless lavalier microphone system. I think they're 80 bucks on Amazon and you can get them in one or two channel versions with either a little wireless mic pack or uh, with a handheld microphone. So what am I doing today is this little guy is not wireless and I found that to be a problem at my last video shoot. And so it feels pretty light and I popped the top off here. You just uh, take out some of the, uh, the screws out of the bottom. You can see where I took the feet off. And uh, look at how much space there is. There's so much room for activities. I figure, why not, why not conduct a little experiment here? This thing accepts 12 to 15 volts, which is exactly in line with what a three cell lithium ion battery would output. I have built lithium ion batteries before. This is a battery pack I built for a coat. Um, that's for the coat, and then I built a little XT60 adapter for it. I mean, we're just talking about wiring and, and, uh, and uh, heat shrinking. This is not hard. It's just uh, building the battery pack has its procedures. I built another battery pack over here. This is a this is only a force uh, a one cell a USB battery pack, but it has a little thing on it. So and then I've also taken batteries and put them into these cases. You can get these from like uh, uh, Alibaba, AliExpress. They're not expensive. They're like eight bucks a case or less even. And you just throw these lithium ion batteries in. Um, so here are the batteries. You've seen, if you've been watching my channel, you may have seen that we have a crap ton of lithium ion batteries back there. These are all reclaimed from brand new laptop batteries that are just never going to be used because who needs a gateway laptop from 2003 anymore? So my plan is to take some of my reclaimed batteries, which are still good, and um, maybe adapt them into this thing, into this the empty part of this case. And it should only take a little bit. Like it's this is not a difficult thing. I've I've built these things before, so I think um, I think we can have a little bit of fun here, hang out, and I don't know, see what happens with uh, trying to do electronics, uh, you know, home style DIY electronics. Yeah, the trusty 18650, right? So. I already charged these up. Um, this is a charger discharger and it measures, and these are all just over two amp hours. So we have four good batteries here, fully charged. Uh, all those over there have been charged and discharged multiple times to make sure that they're all sound. The thing I like about the 18650 is the steel case. If it, if you, if it blows up, it really doesn't blow up by starting a huge fire. Uh, unless it's a really catastrophic failure. Oh, the other thing that I noticed, back here in the back corner, I don't know how well you can see this, but we're going to try this. Back here in the back corner, there is already a cutout on the back wall there. There is already a cutout for a switch. And one thing I wanted to do was turn off in case, because I don't know how much drain this thing has, um, I wanted the switch to be able to turn off the uh, the battery pack, so that e even though I'm going to have a battery dis a battery management board in there, I still want to be able to prevent it from being drained on its own, just because uh, the circuit isn't you know perfectly. You know, it, it's the circuit's meant for being plugged in, so it doesn't matter to the engineer who's designing it if it drains a little bit. Here what I have is a is a Chinese uh, battery management board. I have this one already wired and I know it works, or at least it did a year ago because I had used it for a project. It charges through the balancing connector. If you have not one of these, this is a four cell and this is a three cell balance board, but each of your uh, LiPo batteries is supposed to have a balance connector and then the balance connector 
It's not normally used for charging, but at these low currents that I'm going to be doing this at, we can use the, the, uh, the balance connector for charging. It'll be fine. So our battery doesn't have a balance connector, so we have to solder one in. We will need a little bit of wire to solder everything together. So first things first, I have a LiPo charger back here. LiPo chargers are special because they not only output the 12.6 volts total, but they output it at a particular current waveform. And you can see that the thing powers on. So this is already a working unit, and we're going to try to keep that a working unit. I think we can do that. And this, this antenna is not removable, so that's already annoying. And uh, other than that, this is a really lightweight unit. Aside from this actually kind of very, kind of nice front panel here, um, this this circuit board could be just removed from here and turned into a port much more portable unit. I think I think this company could be onto something here if they redesign this little case. But whatever. By the way, if you have one of these since I started here. If you have one of these, the way this comes apart is you take the four screws out of the bottom. You have to pop the adhesive feet off and then this part pops out. Don't do what I did and try to pull off the side. I ended up breaking it. Um, it's, it's just it's just glue. I just glued the plastic back together. It's no biggie. But um, it pops off from the top and they do there is a forward so make sure that when you put it back on the smaller key goes to the front and the larger key goes to the back and then it pops back in like that so to get started here where should we start well maybe making the battery pack maybe figuring out it has to be a three cell battery which means three individual cells or six cells or nine cells so we're gonna probably be arranging them like this they're probably gonna go in here also, we have a, um, a good soldering iron over here. Never underestimate the need for a decent soldering iron. This is a, uh, a Weller. I want to say that is 65 watts, and it's temperature controlled. And, you know, obviously everything's dirty as heck, but, you know, I'm an engineer. Or was an engineer. There we go. That should be focused. I love this new camera. It has focus peaking. It makes it very easy for me to see when things are in focus. So first things first, let's make the battery. We just need a three cell battery. There we go. Now we got some wire. And it's all quality stranded. Um, so first what I have to do is check polarity of this. And I'm pretty sure Green is positive on here, which means black is positive on this. So somebody remember that for me. Black is positive and yellow is negative. And then red would be the second cell and white would be the first cell. Um, let's get the soldering iron turned on. And we want a fairly high temperature because what you want is to transfer the heat to the solder and the metal quickly so you don't transfer too much heat to the battery and you only transfer the heat that you need. Yeah, this does not, um, it's not normally the way I like to color code things, but these these wires, this, these connectors came from China that way. And uh, this is of course this uh, same stranded stuff that I said don't make batteries with. But um, just want to add a little bit here. Just get the bubble onto the battery. Not transfer a whole lot of heat, just get the bubble onto the battery. There you go. So you can see the, um, well, I don't know if you can see it, but the uh, the solder flux uh, cleans and everything as we go. So um, now it should just be a matter of getting a wire to uh, bridge the gap and figure out where we want to tap in. Maybe we'll start. Positive could be here. And then we'll connect those two with one wire. And that would be cell one on the bottom and cell two up top. Okay. 
So far, so good. I think we should have, yep, our glue gun should be just about ready now. So let's just put a little glue here. Arts and crafts with uh, Leonard French. That should be like all the glue that we need. So I'm actually going to turn that off. Tin that. Here, let's try a zoomed in shot. I gotta practice anyway. Let's flip it around, I guess. Now we got to remember which cells to solder together, or else we're going to have a real big problem. So let's um, let's prepare that red wire. Maybe this time we'll cut both ends of it before I have to yank it off. And then yeah, I'm just going to kind of lean this up against here. All right. Now you know how you know if you get this wrong. If you accidentally tie these together on this side, it goes boom. So don't do that. Now, on this side, these are cell two. And so cell two is gonna go together with this. Oh, that gets hot in my fingers. All right, now once again, I am going to check to make sure I am not wiring the two in short circuit. That would be very, very bad. Here, we'll, real quick, we'll take the negative lead, put it here. We'll also disconnect this, because we are about to have the battery connected and these leads are exposed. Here, stay there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, <clears throat> so here we have the very, very basics of a battery pack. Let me check it. DC, 30 volts. Okay, so what do we say, black was positive? and yellow was negative. So we should have, there we are, 12.6 volts. So that's good. And now we can also check our connector. 12.6 volts, 8.38, and 4.19. So perfect. That is a good battery pack. Uh, actually, let's not go far with that because now I also want to check these other leads and make sure that the battery management circuit is working. I'm going to separate these leads, stick them up in the air, and we'll connect the battery and connect one there and one here. 12.57. So the battery management board appears to be passing the, the voltage through. This is a full-featured board. It should uh, it should provide uh, under voltage protection and over voltage protection as well. So that's the battery pack. The battery pack again will go into here. The circuit board will you know mount to the battery pack somehow. And then what I need to do is tap into this board inside here. So let me first put that aside. The The problem is that the receiver is wired and the last gig that I did, which was my choir concert, uh, I really could have used this wirelessly. And in fact I did. So what I did was I took this battery pack and I wired it up so that I could power this receiver with this battery pack. And it just sat on top of the battery pack. So 
we are making it battery powered just for fun also i mean come on it's like there's like so much room in here for activities there's just this is absolutely perfect like nobody you could and you don't even have to make this battery pack by the way like if you wanted to try to do this at home and you don't want to you don't want to take and do all of this with a battery pack you can buy a three cell battery pack um you know right out right out of the store like uh, amazon has them but any rc supply store will have them and uh you can even probably buy one with a battery management board built into it, and then you can just wire that up and connect a charging board. So, first things first, to get access to this charging port, as well as to get access to this backboard, I've obviously got to take this apart a little further. So let me get started on that. Uh, that battery management board is the same one I've been using in this battery pack, and it cuts out just fine at like 3 volts, which is perfect for these uh, Sanyo. These are genuine Sanyo cells. They have the imprint on them, and they're the right size and everything. They're a little bit older. They're from about 10 years ago, and you wouldn't expect them to be in great shape, but they actually run just fine. I haven't had any problems with any of them. Um, normal failure rate of like 1 or 2%. Yes, so will it charge when connected to power? What do I have for that? You, you can't just use any old uh, lithium ion or, or any old power supply. You have to use a lithium ion power supply. Let me see if I can pull that into focus. Is that getting better? Okay, so this is a lithium ion charger. It's for three cells. It outputs 12.6 volts, but there's more to that. Um, when you charge a lithium ion battery, it actually outputs the 12.6 volts on a constant current and then switches over to constant voltage and ramps down the current at the uh, the final charging stage. So let me grab, focus again. There we go. We got these sides off. And I think this is one molded piece. Yeah, this is... Okay, so don't make the mistake I did and assume that these pieces are separate. This is this back is one molded piece, and the, the front slips in and out, it looks like. But the back is one molded piece, and there's the front. So if, if you really wanted to, you could make your own front panel for the thing and really make this wireless. Like, I mean, like, tiny and wireless. I'm going to keep it in this form factor. And then, so to get this out, I think, hmm, yes, I'm going to need to take off the XLR connector is what holds this back together. Yeah, <laughs> I will be happy to give Yilsa and Nico a Skittle. Where are they? We have a couple Skittles right here for them, actually. Puppers. Puppers? Hey, pupper. Hang on. I gotta get it on camera. Come here. Go, pupper. Sorry, we're a little zoomed in with the uh, the camera. Oh, nice. Thank you. The hot milk gun was off, thankfully. These are three S. These are three series, so it'll put out 12.6 volts at max charge. This thing can probably take all the way down to the, the 9 volts cutoff. If not, whatever, it'll turn off anyway. But it it's going to run for a very long time on 11.1 times 2 amps, uh, about 22 watt cells, a to total of 22 watt cell. And this should be the last screw for this circuit board. Can we see what I'm, we can see what I'm doing? Good. Let's zoom in a little bit. Okay, so that appears to be the hard part. I don't actually need to desolder those other things because I really just need to access the tip and the ring there. 
So this is ring and this is tip. Yes, and what's this over here? You don't even know what that one is. Okay, so we want these two or these two. Here and here. This is negative and this is positive. Okay. Power that down. Woo! That was a little close. I think I cooked my finger a little there. Let's do this uh, this way so I don't cook my finger over here. Okay. So far, so good. So once again, we make sure nothing is touching anything it shouldn't. I'm going to plug this in and turn on the meter. Yeah, 12.5. And then back over here, what was it? White was negative and green was positive? Because that made sense also have 12.6. Okay, so we can safely try plugging in our battery after maybe putting some of this back together. Mount the batteries in here too. Okay, so while we're waiting for that to heat up, if I plug this in, nothing goes boom. Ah, but that didn't turn on either. What the hell? Okay, so that's not good. What's going on there? What I forget, guys? I forgot something. I did forget the switch, actually. <laughs> I totally forgot the switch. Let me, let me see this works at least then, and I'll unsolder it. And um, But for some reason that didn't work, so... <laughs> no, that's six... Okay, I just... I don't know. And then what out of the battery management board? One point three volts, so something's tripping the battery management board. Hang on. Hmm, interesting. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Let me wire in the switch. It might that's gonna be easy to do anyway. So let me put this in my lap so that the antenna is off of the table. And see if I can't press down on these little tabs because there's a couple little tabs in here and work this little plastic piece loose. Where'd the switch go? Up here. So there's the switch. That's perfect. That's absolutely perfect for that switch. Um, the other thing that I didn't do is I haven't plugged in the power supply while also having the circuit board plugged in. So let me try that too. I don't have the um, I don't have the polarity reversed. We checked that before. So here's what we'll do. We'll plug this in, and we do in fact get power here can turn power on and off. There's power off. Power on, power off, power on, power off. Power on. Hey, there we go. Power off. It just, I needed to, it looks like we needed to reset the battery management board. That's all. And to reset it, you need to power it on. So that's what it was. Phew. Thank goodness. That's the only problem. 
So we'll just we'll add a switch. I don't know what the drain is, and I don't want to find the things dead all the time. These batteries seem to hold their their charge pretty well. So we'll just wire in the switch. Of course, guess what now? Those nuts <laughs> are preventing it from, or the printing the switch from switching. You believe that? Uh, you know what? The a screw head from the inside though would work fine. Okay, let's try that. Testing is very important. Okay. Throw it the other way. Good. It works. Good. I actually don't care which way it works. Let's solder it all up. And solder just to tin it real quick. We want to tin the ends of the wire since they are unclean. And we want to tin the switch. I don't even care which two. It has always the middle and then one of the ends. So this is really easy. We do one of the ends, done. And do the other in the middle. Done. Done. So now we have a way to disconnect the battery when we are not using it. Okay, let's hope that that's enough to stick it to something on the bottom here without too much trouble. We can add a little bit to help right about here. I also don't want to add too much because if I ever need to remove this, I'd like to be able to get it off without destroying anything. So what do we think so far? Then we take this battery management board. We can put a stripe or two of hot glue gun on that. And just mount that right there to the batteries themselves. We'll figure out how to get those two to work together better in a moment. Maybe a little folding is in order. A little wire folding. We try not to do it too many times so we don't weaken the wires. And I do not like how exposed those wires are, actually. So I'm going to cover them with hot glue. Like just a crap ton of hot glue right there. So now that's going to be insulated in case that plastic case or something has any kind of conductivity to it. And while we're letting that dry, I guess we'll do a function test. So this is, it's plugged in and I'm, it won't turn on, right? Because we figured that out, that it needs to be initialized. Yep, now it's initialized and now it works. Now we turn off the switch, we get nothing. We turn off the switch, you can also uh, turn it on and off. 
Now, the question is, if I turn the switch back on, hey, it works! What if I turn it off while it's on, back on? Oh, hey, look at that, it just turns back on. You see in this? Okay. And if I turn it off, and then off, it does not go back on, back on, and then back on. Perfect. This is awesome. And then just plug it in to charge while the uh, switch is on, I guess. That's the only thing you have to remember is to turn the switch on to charge. So what do you think of that? Only one injury. <laughs> well, also, we have to put it back together, and I actually have it ready to plug in here to see how it sounds on, on stream. Alright, so there is the XLR plugged in. Check one, two. So this is the microphone. And you can tell it's the microphone because when I peek, check one, two, you get that uh, you get that peak signal right there. So what do you think of that? In an hour and a half is what it took. An hour and a half, we now have a wireless, or at least wirelessly powered. The, certainly this part doesn't need to be wireless for me because this is the part that goes with the camera and then this XLR or this line out plug into the camera or my recorder and this just needs to go on the tripod with me. That's the problem is that I don't always have power at the tripod. The camera's battery powered, this is now battery powered. This is only an $80 unit and all I had to do was add ten dollars worth of parts and an hour and a half of my time so now I have a wireless lavalier that I can take on a job or shoot with me